Good morning, everyone. So my name is uh, Simon Trudel from, from Nagra. I'm uh, in charge of uh, product marketing for uh, multi-screen, uh, over-the-top services, cloud services, and uh, connected home products for, uh, for Nagra. And uh, over this uh, session this morning, uh, we will go over um, what's happening in the industry from uh, the standpoint of, uh, of uh, OTT TV distribution. And now, actually, television in itself is, uh, and television content is transforming uh, the internet, and, uh, and both at home and on the go. And now it is impacting uh, strategies for media and uh, service providers in general. And we'll also look at uh, what are these challenges, what technologies are needed to be successful in this new space, and provide you with some examples of, uh, of uh, European uh, service providers that have launched uh, initi initiatives and new, uh, new products to, uh, to take advantage of uh, the new infra opportunity and the, uh, I would say, uh, on-demand infrastructure that, uh, that the internet's providing for delivering content to, uh, to users. Just before uh, getting into further details, I would like to uh, just tell you a little bit more about, uh, about uh, Nagra and, uh, and, and our group. Nagra is part of the Kudelski Group. Uh, it's a company based in, uh, in Switzerland. Uh, and with our sister uh, brands and companies, our focus is really on providing uh, security and converge uh, media solutions for service providers in the context of uh, connected home and connected entertainment. And with, through, through our products and, and, and vision, our ability to deliver premium content to every screen has become really uh, the motto for, for us and for a lot of, uh, of our customers. In terms of uh, footprint in the market, we secure today over $90 billion worth of revenues for service providers around the world. And that covers over 250 million devices. And more importantly, in the past years, we've uh, added to our uh, lineup up to 20 big customers in different parts of the world, uh, be it in the Americas, Europe, or Asia, that have deployed uh, advanced multi-screen solutions, bringing the convergence between set-top box content and, uh, and other devices, and making sure that uh, the overall experience is optimized for delivery of premium content across all the screens. Now let me dig into uh, the core of the introduction and what I would like to cover in the next few minutes is what is actually uh, happening in the industry in terms of, uh, of transformation and usage of, uh, of IP delivery for content. I think you've seen in this picture, you've seen this picture uh, in your homes, uh, pretty much everywhere, something is changing. We have now devices, tablets, connected uh, uh, devices, uh, smartphones everywhere. And this is definitely transforming the way we access and consume content. This is bringing a lot of change to the industry. And it is time now to look a little bit at where we stand in terms of penetration and numbers and understand what has to be done next to, uh, to be successful. Just quoting here some numbers from uh, Ovum uh, that will uh, speak throughout this event. They just published uh, research last week saying that OTT TV is on a, is on a trend to reach 177 uh, million households worldwide in, uh, in, in more or less four years' time. That's a lot, and we could argue it's only 10% of overall TV households worldwide. But when you take it into proper perspective and look at the industrialized world and, and, and our space, that's a significant penetration, and that's a big change in the way uh, content is delivered to, uh, to users and, and subscribers around the world. And basically, what we would like to look at in, the, in this session here is how, basically, providing new content, providing uh, content over the top, which is really TV, is changing the internet. What strategies this is going to have to, 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 to mean for, for service providers in, uh, in, in determining what has to be done next and what technologies and alliances really are needed to be successful in this new space. 
And to be able to analyze that a little bit, our research group at uh, ANAGRA has looked at different sources of uh, research available in the industry, uh, from the likes of uh, Ericsson, Cisco, uh, Ovum, and, and, and other uh, companies that provide uh, consumer and internet research, to really draw on the numbers and understand what are these trends and where we're headed. Basically, if we look at, uh, at uh, video over the internet, we're going to be reaching in 2018, 79% sorry, of internet consumer traffic will be video. So that's a major, major shift if you look back 10 years ago when we were just considering that, yeah, video was coming to the internet and we're trying to make the plumbing work. So it would be uh, a feature that we could add to uh, basic HTTP and web browsing. This clearly shows that the internet has become a, uh, a media, uh, delivery media, scalable uh, delivery media for video and television. And that is definitely, uh, keep, will keep growing over the years. Uh, we're expecting, uh, according to the numbers, uh, uh, multiply by three growth over the next five years, which translates into uh, uh, a KGAR of 21%. So sustained growth, sustain usage of the network as a video distribution uh, tool, and also uh, a larger share of that content going straight to big screens. So not just to the five-inch uh, screen that you have in your pocket, but to the other uh, bigger screens in your homes, which means that basically a lot of video and TV delivery will be done uh, over the internet in the years to come. Another big trend to look at is the use of uh, mobile devices. First of all, the number of mobile devices will reach some pretty impressive figures. Smartphones figures uh, as well uh, are, are in that range over 2020, with a large number of new subscribers joining the network over the next four years, three to four, four to six years. So that's a major uh, shift as well in having new devices and new technology for accessing content. And this will also drive mobile traffic, which will become up to 12% of total internet traffic in 2018. And the share of video on mobile will multiply by nine. So again, uh, more devices, different types of devices, more personal devices uh, used for really delivering video, accessing content, and doing it over either uh, faster speed 4G networks as well as uh, Wi-Fi offloading uh, when in the home or in, uh, in the vicinity of, uh, of uh, Wi-Fi uh, routers, etc. All of these figures really mean that there is big change happening, big change in, uh, in terms of uh, the strategies that, uh, that content providers as well as service providers will have to look at in the years to come. The profile of consumption is going to evolve. Uh, there will be new requirements for uh, uh, faster and more reliable infrastructure. And obviously, the forms of content will also evolve. Because on the mobile phone, you've all noticed that our attention span is shorter, and the content that uh, especially the Millennium uh, generation is looking at is short format, uh, straight to the point, easy to, uh, to consume any, anytime, anywhere. And ultimately, this content should also link to uh, bigger screen experiences and provide a continuity between the smaller devices and the bigger ones we have in our homes. So another challenge to add to the list for content providers. Let's not get carried away too much as well by the data. And uh, I'd like to just dig a little bit deeper into these numbers and just look at some of the other underlying trends. First of all, in terms of the content, if we look at deep at the numbers, we see that in the US market, for instance, Netflix is already 31% of video that is uh, delivered to consumers. That's a lot of traffic. And, phases, and actually, YouTube is also generating uh, significant figures in a range of 12%. So a lot of it today is still dominated by a couple of uh, leading edge players. So we're still reaching early adopters. But this is quickly growing to the overall population and overall uh, set of uh, age groups that access media content. And above all, what it means is that to reach everyone, and increase consumption, you need a broader range of content and broader range of formats. And this is what typically Netflix and YouTube have been good at doing. 
So we're still in the 20% uh, percent of uh, consumers that consume 80% of the traffic. And that will likely evolve as soon as the market keeps opening up and new forms of content around the world are made available uh, over IP. Other things we're seeing is that monetization. We will have a whole track here to discuss it uh, at TV Connect. Monetization is happening, but there's still some work to do around either subscription-driven revenues or uh, advertising uh, revenues that will have to get smarter in the years to come to make uh, uh, basically the, uh, the whole ecosystem uh, feel uh, good about this new mode of distribution that we're, we're seeing uh, happening. Down the line, if we look at this, we're seeing, to summarize, big trend in internet TV happening and the internet becoming a scalable and massive delivery system for, for video. We're seeing mobile devices, all forms, becoming really important uh, uh, screens in the experience for consumers on a day-to-day -day basis at home and on the go. And we're seeing a, a, a really a, a challenge to bring new forms of content and monetize it to these different screens. And it's putting actually a lot of pressure on the service providers, the network service providers, that have to find a way to monetize this new experience and content and do it in an efficient way through partnerships, alliances, and, uh, and, and really leverage the content sources available to go beyond what they, at some point, were afraid of being, the dumb pipes. So we've seen evidence already of several service providers in Europe and North America uh, blending content with network access and driving consumption and properly pricing it for consumers. And we think that this is a strategy that will expand globally and is actually uh, quite significant and important for ser network service providers to adopt and accelerate that adoption with the proper technologies uh, over the, um, the coming quarters. In terms of uh, making it work and what it means for uh, the overall environment of service providers, what we're seeing from our angle is that there are two major components that need to be uh, properly uh, mastered in, in, a, in an OTT environment and, uh, and for distributing content to multiple devices. There is a set of OTT platform services that have emerged, some, some key values that need to be put in place and features and then there is the reach of devices, the ability of bringing securely content to a broad range of devices in all certain situations, so that you reach consumers uh, uh, in, every, uh, in every opportunity when they want to consume content. And some of these, I would say, end-end and back-end components that are required go from providing uh, uh, like scalable live TV, OTT, start over uh, catch-up TV uh, services to, uh, to consumer, but it's also about providing advanced recommendation capabilities, pushing the right content, building the experience with the consumer in a more personalized way, and also bringing some important uh, TV features that we are used to have on the big screen, such as managing, and that's important here in Europe, managing multiple language, providing uh, subtitles, and making that very convenient, or even parental control as well, uh, making that very convenient for consumers on all types of devices. And finally, there is an opportunity to bring new services, such as network PVR, so that you can access a large library of content anytime. Download to go and electronic sales through that are new ways of monetizing content and also providing convenience to the consumer. And above all, you need to bring that content to all devices in a secured way and provide interaction between the device, uh, the devices. You're probably in many cases going to start watching on a tablet or a smartphone some content and then will want to go sit down in the living room and take it to the big screen for a complete experience. So, moving content around between devices, doing it in a secured way so that content owners are not worried about content leaks or any uh, issues related to piracy is actually extremely important and needs to be done as part of a, uh, an advanced uh, OTT solution and, and system. Now I would like to look at some of the early examples of uh, European 
service providers, and actually happen to be Niagara customers as well, that have deployed uh, uh, really uh, solutions that help them monetize these new OTT services and really make uh, OTT TV a reality for them in, in, as part of their product offerings and overall strategies for, for the future. First one I'd like to go uh, to, to have a look at is, uh, is the opportunity of going off net. And that's often more for uh, satellite and, and cable uh, providers that have geographical constraints in, in reaching consumers. So it's the opportunity of using the internet and over the top technologies to reach uh, new markets and, and consumers in a, in a given geography. Another aspect that we are, we're going to look at is the possibility of creating targeted and, uh, and, and more segmented uh, OTT offerings. So the so-called skinny TV packages or more targeted content-related packages that can be distributed over the top and reach a new uh, segment of customers uh, in the marketplace. And finally, uh, we'll look at uh, other opportunities of upselling existing uh, content, repackaged as OTT services, and, uh, and, and providing a large library, as uh, Rick was pointing out uh, in his introduction, uh, going from the 2% of content available to a lot more, and making that uh, available through a very uh, simple user experience across multiple devices. So the cases I'm going to look at, our first one is uh, VU uh, and their uh, BTV content service in, in Belgium. So VU is a uh, cable operator in the uh, in a French part of, uh, of uh, Belgium with uh, over a million subscribers and they already had uh, a lot of uh, exclusive content through their BTV uh, subsidiary and they decided to bring that content over the top as, uh, as a package available across the country over, uh, over IP networks. Second example we'll look at is uh, Canal Plus Spain and their uh, uh, YumV uh, Yum service uh, that is also offered in partnership with, uh, with Vodafone uh, through a set-top box, uh, OTT set-top box uh, showing here, again, examples of monetization of uh, premium content, exclusive content, originally available only on, on satellite platforms and now uh, distributed uh, over the internet. And finally, uh, we'll have a quick look at uh, the Canal Plus France and Canal Play uh, service that, uh, that is also offered on big screens and uh, multi-screen devices. Uh, really much uh, a, uh, a best, uh, uh, best of OTT uh, platform uh, aggregating uh, content that is uh, provided over the, the satellite service as well. So BTV, uh, just to give you a little bit of uh, background on service, it is a, a platform uh, run from the cloud, uh, provided in this case uh, cloud service provided by, by Nagra, uh, really a pay-as-you-go model that allowed them to quickly hit the market in, in, in five months and bring all their best live channels, seven uh, live channels, including sports, and bring these uh, channels to consumers over tablets, PCs, Xbox, etc., allowing uh, really uh, both their existing customers and new ones to have access to live TV and on-demand TV, premium content and premium uh, movies and sports plus the capability of, of packaging uh, TV content, for, especially for live sports, with one-day events or uh, one-day pass or specific uh, um, uh, channels dedicated to, uh, to football. Second example is, uh, is YumV in Spain, where um, in the case of uh, this service launched in 2011 that has already reached last year over uh, a million active devices uh, on a monthly basis, penetration of uh, close to one-third of, uh, of the subscriber base, uh, satellite subscriber base. Same, similar model, in this case, platform operated by, uh, by uh, the uh, YumV group, Canal Plus group, YumV team, providing exclusive content, live in OTT, reaching all possible devices, including connected TVs, and, uh, and making uh, really uh, live television available to, uh, to uh, all subscribers and extending that offering to uh, off-net 
users, OTT uh, uh, consumers that can subscribe to a package either through a reseller, in this case uh, uh, Vodafone, and in that portion they get a set-top box they can hook to their TV set, or take directly a package from, uh, from uh, Canal Plus and consume the content on PC and other devices and uh, tablets, etc. So a lot of flexibility, a lot of new business models uh, made possible by OTT TV. And, uh, and as we'll see in a, in a couple of examples later down, uh, a huge uh, proof of scalability of the platform and capability to deliver live content uh, uh, over, uh, over the internet in the Spanish market. Pricing has also evolved over the years with now some very well studied and, and, uh, and, and aggressive uh, packages that uh, allow consumers to get a taste of uh, full PTV uh, uh, services uh, at a very affordable price in a more, uh, uh, I would say, flexible mode with no, no set top box in, involved. And finally, Canal Plus France with the Canal Play service, which really provides a huge catalog of VOD assets to, uh, to consumers. And in this case, pricing is also adapted depending on the size of the screen with a, a, an extra two, dollar, two euros to contribute for access to, uh, to the content on the, on the TV set, either through uh, a service provider, set-top box, or, or, um, uh, or other uh, OTT boxes found in, the, in retail. So this shows that Monetization is starting to take place. Pricing is starting to be adjusted. We expect that at some point, as consumer value in, is better understood and consumers start seeing the real uh, benefits and convenience brought by, uh, by OTT delivery and multi-screen uh, usage, that most likely a lot of, uh, of these packages will be readjusted uh, upwards to, uh, to, uh, to higher pricing ranges. And, uh, and new monetization models will also uh, come into play. So down the road, what this means from a technology standpoint, and that will help me uh, uh, get close to, uh, to conclusion here, it requires at the end a, a set of technologies that allow the distribution of content in a very efficient way in the home, and a set of technologies in the back end that will allow you to converge Security requirements, multi-screen requirements, broadcasts, uh, multicast technologies, as well as, uh, as uh, OTT unicast into a combined offering and, uh, and, and technology platform that will abstract some of the complexities uh, related to the different networks that need to be activated to make the, the content available to everyone. So for us at Nagra, this means, and, and this is really the message we're communicating to, to our customers, it's mean, it means securing the content, it means engaging, creating the engagement with the consumer through a consistent using experience and also providing it in a way that is accessible everywhere, in the home and outside the home. With the necessary modularity, cloudification of all that uh, technology and a short time to market because the pressure to do things will accelerate over the coming months. In terms of security, we're taking this opportunity to mention that we, we just made an announcement to really uh, drive the uh, security requirements and, and solutions one step further uh, in, uh, in, in the context of converged networks. And I think up to now, we've, uh, we, we've had most of the time broadcast platforms and OTT platforms that were sort of running side by side with different sets of technologies that were developed in different, uh, at different times. And what we're seeing now, and that's what we're bringing to, uh, to, to the market even more, is a convergence through our uh, Anycast Connect product, product that we're, uh, we're launching this quarter, is really to provide a convergence of security uh, uh, solutions uh, across all devices and on the back end side as well, to make uh, really uh, security uh, uh, transversal and transparent in all experiences uh, on, different, uh, on different screens and devices. And it's also about providing, uh, in addition to the technology itself, further services, cybersecurity services, that really make uh, the whole ecosystem secure. And at the end, uh, secure the business model of service providers. Other important aspect is the scalability of what you're building in terms of OTT TV. And we have this example here of uh, Yumvi service about a month ago, El Clasico football game between uh, 
uh, Madrid, uh, Real Madrid and, uh, and Barcelona. 362,000 people connecting with devices, over-the-top live TV, happening with great quality of service and, uh, and a big jump uh, over, over last year of 29% in consumption. So this shows that consumers are getting hooked, a new generation of consumers are getting hooked to accessing content over the internet, getting the experience and the best content in the device of their choice. And that means for service provider that there is really today a real need and challenge in anticipating the needs of a new generation of consumers that are expe expecting that convergence, don't want to see the complexity of the networks or any of that, but just want to have access to their best content on any screen at any time.